Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. Today, we're gonna to go through the steps on how to create a bootable USB stick so that you can then go and uh, load an operating system on a computer and get it upgraded from that USB stick. But before we do that, please remember to subscribe below and uh, click on that notification bell to be kept up to date as I release new videos. Let's go through those steps right now. So my name is Emilio and I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And today we're gonna to do a couple of things. We're gonna look at how to boot a USB stick, but how to actually create that USB stick in the first place uh, with an ISO that you have uh, acquired. And uh, we're using a software package called Rufus to go and create that uh, USB stick. So we've got two things on here. If you look here on my computer, I've got a 16 gig USB stick. And then I've got an ISO, which in my case is a Windows 10 ISO, but you can really use any ISO that you want. So you, I've done this with uh, various versions of Windows ISOs, as well as your Linux, CentOS, Red Hat, Ubuntu, whatever it may be. As long as it's an ISO, in this case, we're focusing on an operating system. We're gonna go and get that ISO from the internet. In my case, I've got Windows 10 off the Microsoft website. You can download the software from wherever you need to, but you need to have the ISO of the file on your computer to be able to then go and create the actual bootable USB. The other thing that's important is making sure that the USB stick is big enough to be able to store the complete ISO. So in my case, Windows 10 being 5.2 gig, I need a USB drive that is larger than that. In my case, I've got a 16 gig USB. Now, if I just copy this ISO file into the USB stick, or if I open up this uh, ISO file, like I unzip it, uncompress it, and copy the contents into here, that, that does not make the actual USB bootable. It just copies the files, but then you plug that into your computer and it will not start automatically. So we need to make sure that we can get the files onto there and then make the USB drive bootable. So I mentioned before Rufus. So Rufus is the tool that we're gonna be using. Rufus is completely free. You can go into Google, type in download Rufus, R-U-F-U-S, download the version from their website, this one is 3-10, um, which is the latest one for me, but you, you may have a, a newer version if you're watching this in the future. Uh, but that is really it, right? So you just get your ISO, get your USB stick, download Rufus, and then we can go through the next steps. So with the software opened, uh, we're presented with something right up front, which is really, really good news. It's uh, already picked up my 16 gig USB stick automatically. It's already found the brand, Toshiba, et cetera, et cetera. If yours has not shown up in here, maybe click on the drop down right here and then navigate to your USB stick. Uh, if it's not even showing up there, uh, make sure that it's showing up within Windows Explorer. You could have a problem with the USB stick. It could be formatted incorrectly. So the first step is to get that USB stick uh, visible from within the Rufus interface right here. The second part is under the boot selection area. It says disk or image, please select. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate to the ISO file um, of uh, our operating system that we're wanting to install. So let's just go ahead and click on select. So I've got some Microsoft tools in here, including Windows 8, Windows 10, Windows Server. Um, any of these will really work as long as you've got an ISO file, but we're gonna be selecting Windows 10, and this is the ISO that we're going to be using. This is the Windows 10 ISO, and selecting open. We'll do a quick scan of the image, making sure that the image is uh, correct, that it is not corrupted or anything like that and it will now say ready, making sure that it's saying using image and then the name of your ISO file. If this has not worked, if that ISO has not been uh, detected, if it's not showing up under boot selection right here, go and double check the ISO. The ISO may not be correct, it could be corrupted, something may have gone wrong. So making sure that your ISO is picked up and that it's listed right within here. Um, the other things we're gonna change is under partition scheme, we're gonna select MBR, making sure that target system is BIOS, and then the volume name is really the name that the USB drive is going to be getting. So at the moment it's called 16 GB USB. Uh, it'll now rename it to that. So we can leave that as default or you can give it another name if you, if you so choose to. And then we leave the rest as is. We wanna keep it as NTFS. Uh, status is ready. So now we can click on start. It's gonna give you a little warning that all the data on that USB stick will be deleted, which is completely fine. So it's deleting the partition. Now it's formatting it, creating the master boot record. You'll see that it's automatically under here, if I go into here, um, it's now renamed it. So it's renamed my uh, USB drive to, uh, it's under E drive to this, and it's now starting to copy all of the contents uh, of that ISO 
into this particular USB drive. So it's also making it bootable and making sure that it all works correctly. So this process will take a little bit of time depending on the size of the ISO. This ISO is quite large, so we'll let that run. It may take you know maybe 20 minutes, something like that. Um, and then we'll check back once that is finished. So if everything has worked, that should now be completed. We can now click on close, exit out of Rufus. Your USB stick should now be ready. You can go and navigate it. You can see all of the files that are within here. And uh, the next step is really is just to remove it from this computer, unmount it, you know, remove it safely, and then plug it in to the computer that we're going to be installing it. What we'll do is we'll go into our laptop right now and we will boot it into the BIOS and then make sure that the BIOS has a USB listed as the boot medium, the primary boot medium. So let's just cross over to that other computer right now. So here we are on our computer. This is a standard Lenovo uh, laptop. It's a bit of an older one. So I've gone into the BIOS. Now in my case on the Lenovo computer, I'm pressing F1 to get into my BIOS. Your computer will probably be different if you have a different brand, a different make, a different model, if it's a desktop, if it's a laptop. Um, maybe when you're booting it up, you've got a little um, you know, screen there that shows you press this key to get into the BIOS or into the setup. But getting into here, all we wanna just do is just ensure that it's going to boot from our USB, okay? Now again, every section will be different depending on your version, but this is just a really high level overview. So under boot here, I've just got my priority order and my first boot will be USB HDD or USB hard drive. So just ensuring that that is on there uh, will ensure that the hard drive or that the USB is actually booted first before going to the hard drive that is locally on your computer. And if everything works correctly, you should see on the top left corner, press any key to boot from the USB. And you do that. If you're seeing this uh, Windows logo, you're off to a good start. It means that the USB has been uh, found, that it's actually currently been read from the USB, and that your process has now begun. It's all looking good, which is really, really good. If you are using Linux, if you're using a different version of Windows, of course, the install process will be slightly different. But we're now assuming that the USB stick has been mounted, it's been booted from the USB, and it has discovered the ISO that you've created on that uh, USB stick, which is really, really great. So there you have it. So hopefully you were able to install your ISO onto your USB. You've plugged it into a computer and you're able to mount it and boot from it without problems. As I said, you can do this really with any sort of bootable ISO, whether it be Windows or Linux, or even other you know, technical tools that are out there that are in ISO format. But that's it for now. I would love it if you uh, gave me a thumbs up and comment below if you did find it helpful. As well as that, please always remember to subscribe and click on the notification bell there to keep up to date as I release new videos. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.